Hey everybody, I'm Jen Woodhouse from the House of Wood and today we're talking all about the basics of finishing. Welcome to Finishing School 101. Clear finishes like polyurethane will protect the wood against damage from moisture or everyday wear and tear. So it not only makes your project more durable, but it really brings out the natural beauty of the wood. While staining is optional, you definitely want to apply a clear top coat for long-term durability and protection. There are a few factors to consider when choosing a finish for your project. For instance, durability. What is the project type? Is it a dining table that's going to have a lot of heavy use and needs more protection? Or is it an occasional table which doesn't see a lot of traffic? Another thing to consider is sheen. Varathane finishes are available in matte, satin, semi-gloss, and gloss sheens. The sheen level doesn't affect its durability, so it's just a matter of preference which sheen you choose for your project. I typically like to use a satin or a semi-gloss sheen because I like a little shine but not too much. Another thing to consider is should you use oil or water-based finish? There are pros and cons to both. Oil-based finishes typically take longer to dry than water-based finishes, so take for instance if your project is very large and you need more time to work, you'll want to use an oil-based product so that you have time before the finish dries. But the Verithane brand actually has the fastest dry times of other oil-based polyurethane brands and it's also self-leveling, so it minimizes brush strokes, which is really nice. Water-based finishes dry faster, are low odor, and cleanup is easy with soap and water. Verithane offers both oil and water-based polyurethane. They recommend a minimum of two coats for oil-based and a minimum of four coats for water-based. So while water-based dries faster, it requires more coats, whereas oil-based dries slower, but you don't need as many coats. So you can decide which works best for you. Whether you choose an oil or water-based finish, preparation is paramount to a professional-looking project. You'll want to prepare the wood with a good sanding. I usually start with a medium grit sandpaper like 120 grit and work my way up to 220. Take care to remove all dust and debris from your project before you apply the finish. This is super important. Use a vacuum and a slightly damp cloth or a tack cloth to remove the dust from all the surfaces. If you use a damp cloth, make sure it's only very slightly damp because water can raise the wood fibers and you just spent all that time knocking them down with sanding. Now that your project is dust free, it's time to apply the finish. Make sure your workspace is well ventilated and well lit. You'll need to catch any runs or drips before they dry. So open up your can of finish and stir, being careful not to create bubbles with aggressive stirring. And whatever you do, do not shake the can. It'll increase the risk of bubbles in your finish and we don't want that. Use a high quality bristle brush to apply the finish. Avoid a foam brush or a roller because again, it can cause bubbles and blemishes and that's just a headache to remove later on. You can also spray on a top coat which leaves a beautiful finish, but oftentimes the setup and cleanup of using a sprayer is more work than I'm willing to do in an afternoon, so I just opt for a really good high quality brush. Apply thin, even coats working in the direction of the wood grain. After the first coat dries, sand lightly with a 320 grit sandpaper. And don't use a power sander. Hand sand between coats so that you don't sand off all the finish that you just applied. The idea here is just to smooth out any rough spots and to prepare the surface for the next coat of finish. Once again, remove all dust before applying the next coat. I typically lay on at least three coats of finish to a project, four or more if it needs more protection. But before I apply the last coat, I'll hand sand the project with 400 grit sandpaper for an ultra smooth and glass-like surface. After the final coat dries, if the surface still feels a little uneven or rough, I'll go back over with a paper bag, which is equivalent to about 1,000 grit sandpaper. Remove any remaining dust and let your project cure for at least 24 hours before use. Finally, step back and admire your beautiful, professional-looking finish. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand the basics of finishing. If you want to check out more DIY projects and tutorials, visit jenwoodhouse.com and I'll see you next time. Clear finishes like a polyurethane will protect the wood from damage against... No. Oh, yeah. Energy. This is not torture at all. <laughs> hey guys, we're filming right now. Another thing to consider is sheen. Not the sheen on my face. Da -da -da -da. I was like... Did I say check out twice? If you want to check out this, check out that. I think the heat is just... <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you understand that I, this is horrible.